Hi brothers and sisters, this is chapter, um, oh sorry, Song of Solomon, chapter 1, part 2, Christ responding to wisdom's questions, or woman wisdom's questions. Songs 1, 8. If thou know not, O fairest among women, go thy way forth by the footsteps of the flock, and feed the kids beside the shepherd's tents. Jesus responds to wisdom crying out from within the human woman and says, if you do not know why you must be hidden, go out there and teach and follow the footsteps of my sheep and feed them. Now what is not revealed here can only be revealed experientially. The woman must come to the experience of understanding why she must be hidden and why they can't see her. It's not wanted information. The Lord sent her out to experience rejection. Rejection beside his shepherd's tents. What shepherds? The churches, the pastors, the self-appointed prophets and the apostles of God who have tricked, um, sorry, and apostles, I don't know why I wrote of God, it's not, the apostles that think they're called by God but are not, right? And they've tickled the ears so long, no one wants to hear the truth. Notice that wisdom, the woman, is beside these tents and not inside the tents. She, the female vessel, is not welcome in them. And also, the wisdom that she possesses from the spirit, the spirit portion, is absent from its inside those churches. And then on top of that, I'm adding, I didn't write this in there, but I'm adding, this is also why God had, in the last days, in the last, you know, five or so years, um, he has pushed forward all these females, and they've all been rejected. Because men say... You're a woman, you're supposed to tell us what to do, blah, 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 right? So that's also included in that. There, there had to be wisdom pushed out in the form of women and it had to be rejected to make the word complete. <clears throat> to reveal men their own stubbornness. Song 1-9. I have compared thee, O oh my love, to a company of horses in Pharaoh's char chariot. I have compared thee... He has measured her. And in comparison, she's a choice mare, a female horse. Well, what is a female horse good for? Breeding. A female horse can do something a male horse cannot. A female horse can actually bear children. You cannot bear spiritual children if you do not possess wisdom and if you do not receive wisdom, the actual spirit entity that is the Holy Spirit, she is wisdom. But if you deny wisdom and you do not let her in, you do not let her seep in your skin, you don't let her seep in your ears, and you don't let her seep in your heart, you cannot bear any fruit, let alone bad fruit or good fruit. You can't bear any. You need the female to bear. Okay? She's the choice mare among the Pharaoh's chariots. Who's the Pharaoh? The enemy's false prophets are the Pharaoh's chariot. Songs 110. The cheeks are comely with rows of jewels, the neck with chains of gold. Whose cheeks have jewels on them? Come on, people. He just called her a mare. He just called her a horse. It's her bridal. She is bridled, the bride. She's bridled with the bridal of obedience, and the bit in her mouth is his sound doctrine, sound truth, and the neck of chains of gold. Hello, it's the reed of righteousness, are her reins. He reigns over her as the king. Songs. 111. We will make the borders of gold with studs of silver. He's speaking poetically regarding the saddle. But notice he says, We will make. But you notice before that he didn't say we. So he says, He, she, she is his choice mare. She's his choice. Um, and he's put the bit in her mouth and he's put the reins on and he's holding the reins. But then when he gets to the back of the horse and he's talking about the saddle, now he says, We. He's not speaking just of himself anymore. He's speaking of a we. But it's him and him alone that has the reins and the bit in the mouth and the, the jewels on the cheek. But someone else is going to mount that mare. Someone else is going to mount that horse. That's why he's saying we. Plural. Two people. So who's the we? He's referring to himself, God the Son, or God the this is the same person. The Son and the Father are the same per same, same, same entity, God. But he's also speaking of the man, child, husband, 
that at this point is still asleep, but his spirit portion is very much of an active part of her preparation. But it is this man that God has chosen as her husband that is actually going to mount the mare and bear the fruit. But he, the man, is not going to have the reins or control over the bit in her mouth. That's Christ's part. He's only going to, in Christ, be allowed to mount that horse in Christ to be able to steer those reins. Until he's in Christ, he ain't, he ain't pulling those reins. You see what I'm saying? I say it all the time. The Bible is more beautiful and more amazing than people give it credit for. Because they limit it to their idiotic perceptions of what life is all about. Now wisdom speaks again in Psalms 112. While the king sitteth at his table, my spikenard sendeth forth the smell thereof. Now remember Mary washed Jesus' feet with spikenard. She anointed his feet and he said that she had to do that when, when um, Judas argued about it, about the oil, how much it was worth. And he says, you know, she needs to do this and prepare me. While the King Jesus sits at his table to eat, meaning that she has willingly allowed herself to become an offering of love, a sacrifice of love, her spike nard, her unique oil, her oil of gladness that he has made to pour forth through her, her unique signature scent, she is willingly sending up in praise and worship, which is the incense that is profitable to God. All through the Bible he talks about an incense that is abominational, is is an abomination. He calls the tears of the saints an incense that goes up to heaven is collected. But this isn't the incense of sadness and weeping. This is the incense of gladness. This is the oil of gladness that she is sending up willingly because she's received his love and it's going up. Okay? And this is the incense that is profitable. And then Songs 113, A bundle of myrrh is my well beloved unto me, he shall lie all night betwixt my breasts. So she's sending up this spark nard, but she's saying he, he's like a, a bundle of myrrh. Mm. She likens the king and her beloved husband, yet, yet to awake, to myrrh. And says, he shall lie all night betwixt my breasts. So frankincense and myrrh are both hormone regulators. They regulate the functional relationship between the pineal gland and the pituitary gland and calm the mind. It reduces fear and anxiety and, like I said, regulate and heals the hormone function. Now, it is more profitable for a male to take frankincense and a woman to take myrrh, but you can take both. But frankincense is usually more the, the stronger one that, that helps a male and myrrh is normally the stronger one that helps the woman. So she's not actually saying that Jesus Christ is myrrh. She's saying he is her myrrh. He, he creates the myrrh within her. He creates the myrrhing. Okay? That's a, I made that up, but let's just say he creates her myrrhing or her purring. Okay? And the vessel, the, the immune system and the endocrine system use the same pathways. Okay? So... What the Lord does is he sends his signal or he, his, his presence to the pineal gland. That gets sent to the pituitary gland. gland. The pituitary gland sends his um, presence or his blood, life is in the blood, his blood down through and, and your body slowly takes on his blood and you slowly have this, you know, I've talked about it before in a long way, but this is a short way I'll say some type of... Um, bone marrow transplant or kidney transplant where your your blood's being replaced by replaced by God's blood. Now in this in this slow transfiguration process the woman feels a release of myrrh that that helps relate that helps control her hormones. The male the, the male receives um, an increase of okay so okay let's put it like this it's like saying um, estrogen, let's call that myrrh, and let's call testosterone frankincense. So that's how you might be able to understand it better like that. So what he does is he increase, he, he balances the hormones out, and in doing that makes the 
the mer, the female, you know, like she, he makes her the most possible amount of woman she could possibly be. And because of that, she is overflowing with this mer. And in the man, he would increase this, he would, he would um, balance the hormone so well that the man energy of the frankincense will flow from him so freely that he becomes the most of the man that he could possibly be. Okay? So this is why she says, is a bundle of myrrh betwixt my breast. She's saying he's a bundle of myrrh in my own heart. So he has corrected her heart to the point where she is just oozing with this myrrhing and purring in her heart. And she's so filled with love. Okay? And then in Songs 114, My beloved is unto me as a cluster of campfire in the vineyards of Angedi. Campfire is a herbal memory. Uh, sorry. <laughs> campfire or camphor um, is also a herbal remedy henna it is used in uh, some people call it henna but it is used for scabies eczema and skin conditions which reminds me of leprosy okay it's a possibility that that's that is what was used for the cure of leprosy and also used in makeup etc it was an important thing to have in your house it was very valuable so she is referring to his value he is both beautiful, but he also gives healing power. And then in Songs 115, Behold, thou art fair, my beloved. Behold, thou art fair, thou hast dove's eyes. She says fair is in beautiful, the most beautiful. In the dove's eyes, we know there was a dove over Jesus' head when he was baptized. Now in Songs 116, he mirrors that. He says, Behold, thou art fair, my beloved, ye pleasant. Also, I bet he's green. He, he's mirroring her words, but she's really mirroring his words. Okay? This is an important point. They are becoming one mind. And he adds that our bed is green. He's referring to emanations of emerald light. He is an em emerald flame. Flames have degree of heat that gives off color. There's yellow, orange, and red, which are very well known. But hotter than that is blue, which is the Holy Spirit sapphire, her flame. And the Lord is even hotter with a less known green flame, the color of emerald. And before you doubt me, look. Revelation 4 3. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. So the emanation of light surrounding his throne is the emerald green emanation. Okay? So this is this is just one example because I gave you a, a verse here. Before you doubt what I'm telling you, actually take the words I'm using sit down with the Lord and look it all up because everything I'm telling you is in the Bible. It's just that you have never heard anyone come together and put it like this and offer it to you. Um, Psalms 117. The beams of our house are cedar and our rafters are fir. Now, I could go very in-depth to explain this line, but let's just keep it simple, okay? The cedar is beside the water, the woman. The house is the cedar wood. God would, God made. Aaron the high priest used cedar oil and or carvings in cleansing rituals. So to keep it short, let's just say that the house being cedar is a house being cleansed. And I will add this first. Numbers 24, 6. As the valleys are spread forth as gardens by the riverside, the trees are lined with aloes which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. While the valleys spread forth the Lord's woman as gardens of Eden, women sorry as gardens of eden for they are eaves the cedar tree will also be beside his own river and that is bordered with aloes another healing and fragrant you know other healing and fragrant oils and these the lord planted okay um let me think i think i'll leave it there i know this is not going to be easy to swallow it's not it's not difficult to understand it's just easy to swallow because it is quite incredibly removed from anything people teach okay but i do not come and sit before you to share you and with like i do not share anything with you that the lord hasn't told me to share with you okay he has taken me step by step through all of the information i've been placing on my wall in the in almost four years time he's taken me step by step by step by step and he's only ever released me to speak on something when it is his command to do so and the time has come for everybody to pay attention and start preparing yourself 
truly repairing yourself. Not preparing as in going to work all day and then coming home and going, oh, I don't have time to look at the Bible. I don't have time to meditate, um, you know, to commune with God in some type of meditation or whatever. You know, you can't do that. You, uh, It's time. And if you blink and turn away now, you're going to miss it and you're going to regret it. So before you reject what someone is putting out there, go to the Lord and ask them, is this profitable to my spirit? And wait for him to answer you before you jump to your own conclusions. Because this is the absolute truth that I am giving you. And he didn't let me talk about this. He didn't let me touch Song of Solomon until he had pulled me right through so I could see it in a way that I wasn't going to confuse any of you with it. I love you, brothers and sisters. I will begin chapter 2 shortly.